Hey guys, welcome back to The Interceptor. Today we are here with another Alliance War video where Iceway Day has matched up against DSVG. This is the highest alliance we have matched at uh, so far this season. At this point, we were around like 20th rated and they were third. Um, and well, Both in tier one, so it's a fair match. Like We can't complain about it. Uh, and we actually beat them the last time we faced them. So we were feeling pretty good going into this war. Uh, but we know that we had to play our best. And uh, we we did play pretty well. So I have the actually the exact same team as last war. Which is Kingpin, uh, Hood, and Spidey2099. With the difference being I'm actually using Spidey in this war. And ironically, it is for literally the exact same fight that got uh, reassigned last war. It's for that fight, except this time I'm actually taking it. Um, <laughs> and uh, in section one, I only have one fight. I could have taken both fights, but we had someone with Doom coming on path two, or sorry, rather on backup. Um, so I just had him take this fight, which was great. Um, Doom is a little better. Or Doom is definitely better than Kingpin. Um, Kingpin doesn't directly counter it, but you just have to take extra block damage to not let them uh, throw specials. Okay, uh, Mysterio. Um, but on this first node, Ebony Maw, this is a pretty straightforward fight. Uh, the only thing is that the power that you get back is going to be lowered uh, if you've recently knocked down Ebony Maw with a heavy attack. Now, I'm actually going to make that mistake the first time around. And then uh, I instantly, like, the second my heavy attack lands, I realize what I did. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I can't do that. Um, so, credit. I actually did focus up and do it correct uh the next way but right here as i push over i'm i realize i'm just over one bar um so i said uh so there uh my heavy did not connect which was good because i needed it to not connect there and uh this at this point my focus is down uh but i am building up some furies on him he gets up to four furies before i throw my l1 um so basically what i want to do now that i know that i can't knock him down with heavy attacks or i'm going to die to the furies what i want to do is i really just want to play it like a duel um so pretty much ignore the nodes uh but i need to watch his miss so right here i'm gonna get in my special one because i know how long the special one takes i know that i have enough time to get it off before the falter comes back um and we're actually doing a lot of damage to him because the physical resistances uh here we're gonna throw on another special one and i'm pretty sure he's just dead here so we're gonna bait out the cell one uh falter activates i just have to not counter um and we actually end this fight with 100 health and i could not be I could not be happier with how that fight went uh, after the beginning of the fight where I just kind of went stupid idiot mode um, and then I woke up. I was fine. Um, and here is where the death comes. Well, not this fight, but like this set of boosts. Um, so at this point, we were winning against DSVG. They had a really bad start and we were winning three to nothing and then it was three to one and then it was three to two and then it was five to two because they died twice. Um, and the score when I started fighting was five to three. So we had two deaths, uh, a two death lead on them, and they had a little bit extra exploration, like 10 fights extra, but we both had like 40, 50 fights left to do. So that wasn't like a, a deciding, well, actually, uh, uh, never mind. <laughs> uh, but I, I just really want to make sure I don't die. So I have a kingpin. One of, one of the bulkiest champions that doesn't take much damage. Uh, I have the literal max boosts you can use. So this fight goes absolutely beautifully. This is Sweeta's, um, Sweeta's Sasquatch. And the, the start was awesome. We got our special one off. We countered the special one. Here he's going to do it again. I'm going to uh, make sure I stay close enough to safely counter it here. I'm going to throw another special one. Um, and he's going to throw his special two. I'm watching the timer to see if Unstoppable activates. Actually, in that moment, when Unstoppable activated, he had two degens on him, so it was literally impossible for the Unstoppable to activate in, or sorry, for the armor up to activate in Unstoppable, uh, because he was under, he had more than 100%, uh, like, lowering on his defensive ability accuracy, so at that point, it was not possible, um, but... You know, still playing it safe. 
Uh, and then there I hit a light intercept to end off the fight. So we're going to go up to our second fight here. Uh, this is one I was not even slightly worried about. Uh, this is probably what I consider to be the safest fight of the war. Uh, this is going to be a Mole Man on the second node of Path 9, Section 2. This is actually pretty much the same fight that I took last war, except last time it was on Hazard Shift Mini, and this time it's on Path 9, uh, which basically means just a little less health. And uh, obviously I also can't hit into the block here unless I have him at zero charges. Uh, but as soon as I either inflict a debuff on him or he throws a special one, he is going to get his mole mass and her, his monster mass and I'm gonna want, gonna want to not hit into him. Uh, but it's pretty much the exact same fight of just watching the unstoppable timer there. He does get his unstoppable. And in this matchup, you do want to throw L2s. This is primarily the fight that I use those 200% tech boosts for, just to make it a little faster and a little safer. Um, but really, there's nothing to this mole man. It's a very straightforward fight. Um, and not too much to worry about. There, I'm going to throw another special 2, and that one's actually going to kill. So that was about a 50 second fight. And now we are going up to our last war. So, or, or our last fight. Excuse me, this is actually not our last fight. This is our, this is our last Spidey fight. Um, this is going to be Mojo on 47, and uh, for about a season, maybe even a season and a half, they switched the Alliance War timers to be five and a half minutes. Uh, they just switched it. They just switched it back to be five minutes. I don't know why they ever changed it, but they did, and now it's back to five minutes. Um, but they also changed the once someone else goes into a fight, there's like a, a timer that pops up, and after that timer is done you'll be able to go into the fight whether they died or whether they're just in the pre-fight screen. And then if they're in the pre-fight screen, it will go over to a um, another fight, uh, another timer rather for the fighting, uh, for, for like while they're actually in the fight. So it used to be 60 seconds for that timer and now it's 90 seconds. So I don't really know what changed there. Uh, but here, uh, I, what I should have done is I should have just uh, completed the prompt and gone for heavy attack, but at this point it's too late because I'm not able to land a parry and I lose my Mr. Fantastic debuffs. Uh, but I actually am able to get my, uh, my wither up. So as long as I keep my wither up for the rest of the fight, I'll be fine. So the strategy that you want to do for this fight is going to be parry, uh, or sorry, dex parry heavy. And I actually do mess it up quite a bit where I, I don't dash back fast enough and I end up uh, blocking back in it, like right there. That was a parry that was meant to, that was meant to be a dex. It was a complete accident. Um, but I'm doing a pretty good job of keeping up my wither. So I'm uh, keeping up those exhaustions as well to further enhance my power control in the fight. There I lose my wither, but I get another special two right away. Um, so really there was not ever any risk in this fight. Also, this is my last Spidey fight, so I wasn't too concerned about health. Um, so I was taking a little bit extra block damage, I guess. Uh, but there we end it with an L1 and the fight is over. So we just have one fight left. Now, this fight. Uh, when this fight was assigned and I saw the assignments, I said this is not a good idea. Kingpin is an extremely risky option for this fight. Uh, Quake was not banned in this war, by the way, so I said, you need to send a Quake or you need to send a Tigra. Either of those are better than Kingpin. Now, Tigra can get a little sketchy because his heavy attack is actually really difficult to counter uh, with Tigra, so while it would only take two heavy attacks and you'd run the risk of losing your senses, uh, we had a rank 4 Tigra and one special 2 would kill easily against this Civil Warrior. Um, but, uh, I, I told them my concerns. They said, okay, thank you for speaking up and saying something. We're going to reassign this fight to a Tigra. So they did. And then the guy that they assigned the fight to had a problem with it and didn't want to do the fight. So it got assigned back to me with, uh, with Kingpin. I said, this is not a good idea. It's running a serious risk of a death, but I will do the fight if you need me to. So they said, yes, we do need you to do this fight. Uh, so what I was really concerned about, if you don't know the way that um, Civil Warrior activates his armor ups, uh, he activates his armor ups on every fifth hit, whether it connects or does not connect. Um, so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to keep up my degen as much as possible. Uh, also, every time he throws a special one, he gets a bunch of armor ups, um, and he's actually going to uh, just like pretty much spam them the entire fight. And with that many armor ups, he's basically guaranteed to get an unstoppable. Uh, so at this point, he's up to 14 armor ups. So 
he's also not taking much damage. Uh, but there, um, if, if I were to redo this fight, uh, I think that what I would do is I would do like medium light combos the entire fight because doing five hit combos or four hit combos, which I kind of alternated between the two in this fight, was not the best idea. So to be fair, I did make some mistakes but I did not, in my opinion, make enough mistakes to die. Uh, by the way, the bad luck in this fight has not even started. Um, look at that. The medium attack that he whiffed into the air that I countered with my special triggered an unsockable. And then look at that. I intercept him. That I landed a clean intercept there. I'm pausing this. I landed a clean intercept and the first hit, unstoppable. So I'm like, okay, let me calm down. I still got some health left. This is still a winnable fight. What happens literally in the next hit? Look at this. Look at this. So I throw a special one. That's the one where he whiffed. So what do I do? I land a intercept. Wait, right, not, right, not there. Not there. There. I landed an intercept. He goes unstoppable. And then what does he do? I counter with a special one. And he gets unstoppable from whiffing a medium attack. The same exact thing. He does that twice in a row. The second time with a degen active. Which lowers the chances of unstoppable. And he still gets unstoppable. So literally at the end of the fight, the only, and I mean the only three chances he had to hit me, he got three on, he got three armor ups in that time. The only three times he could have hit me, he got unstoppable. If it had happened at literally any other hit in that entire sequence, any hit, that had crossed the cross like the five times uh, mark in the fight. He wouldn't have hit me, but it had to happen on those exact three hits, and I died. In a row, three in a row, not to mention the absolutely insanely bad luck that I got for the very large majority of that fight. I was just getting shit on in this fight. Now. To be fair, I didn't play it perfectly. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that I... Vo uh, like, when we are assigned fights that we are concerned about, what we are told to do is we are told to speak up and say, this is not safe. This is a death. Please don't make me do this fight. And that's what I did. And to be fair, they did try to reassign it, and the guy said no. But I was so clear... And I, I, like, I understand that it, it's hard to be a planner, but at the same time, I, I, I literally went to, like, pretty much every extent I could to get myself not to have to take this fight, and they still assigned the fight to me. And I'm not trying to, like, blame anyone individually. I'm just trying to say, like, what do I do, right? What, what do I do to avoid death like this? And, uh, and we die. Now, to be fair, the death was too horrible RNG. So I'm not going to, like, I'm obviously not blaming my officers at all. Not at all. Uh, but, I mean, I, I tried. I tried my best to get someone other than Kingpin take this fight. I really wish we could have made a Quake work because that is literally the easiest Quake fight in the world. Um, I could have done it with my eyes closed, pretty much. Um, but it, it didn't work out. And at that point, the, the war was five to four. So I logged off my phone, a little pissed off. And then I checked back 10 minutes later and it's five to five and it's tied up. Now, this is actually not what made it five to five. This was earlier in the war. But if you can see, Nebula is at exactly 50% going up to this Nimrod. Uh, now, this is at the end of... Path nine, or sorry, path one, two, three, section one, or so, section two, excuse me. Uh, so this is the buffet 
uh, Kitness Thorns node with the the lowering lowering your combat power rate with the hits. And our guy, this was actually the officer of my BG, the guy who did uh, assignments. He went into this fight with a special one boost, like he hit start fight with Nebula, and the fight loaded for over six minutes. Over six minutes. And at that time, uh, like the fight starts a five minute timer. And if you've not loaded into the fight by then, even if you like eventually load, your game does load, it'll load you back to this screen and it will count as a disconnect. He sat there for six minutes, never got to go into the fight, and it counted it as a death. How is that fair? And then he went right back into the fight and shredded it in like 55 seconds with Nebula with one special two. It was crazy. And what does that do? It makes the war five to five and we lose. Now, losing on disconnects is something extremely familiar to us because our only other loss this season to X5E also came to disconnects. We lost six to eight. We had two disconnects on our side and we won fight duration by a thousand seconds. We were around 8,500. They were around 9,500 against X5E. And we lost when we should have won. In this war, we died, emphasizing the word died, four times. And they died five. But the game was like, nope. Nope, you lose. Why? Why? We play better than them. But we lose. Because because that's the game's logic. I don't know how the game's detection has not evolved to the point where it knows what's a disconnect and what isn't. Or sorry, or rather, what's a death and what's a disconnect. And that disconnects not, should not be counted as deaths. They have to have a way to detect it. Because if that were the case, we would be 8-0 on the season. We would be 8-0. Which means that we would be in third place overall. We would only be behind um, GT40 in first and JA in second. We would be in third, ahead of New Nation right now. We, because we would be 8-0. And that's total garbage. That's ridiculous. Like, pick your shit up, Kabam. Seriously, this is This is horrible. Now, uh, I don't know for a fact that DSVG didn't have a disconnect based on the fights they died to with the counters they used. It's unlikely that they had a disconnect because they didn't have like a situation where they brought in the best counter in the game and they died to it. It was all like suboptimal fights that they died to. Um, but even if they had a disconnect and it was 4-4... Four to four, that that would have that I would have been a little happier about that, right? Um, if neither counted, uh, but without any evidence otherwise, I I just have to assume that they died legitimately five times. But you know that happens. So, unfortunately, our war record this season is six and two. Without disconnects, we would be eight and zero. Oh. My death total is up to two. And my PSR is 50 out of 52, which is 96%. And my death streak is at zero because I died to my last fight. So I'm not having the best season. Um, I'm on pace to die three times if I've died twice through eight wars and there's four left. One death every four wars. Uh, I'd like to not die again. Um, but this, unless Kabam continues the compensation, this could very well be my last uh, season in competitive alliance war. We'll see. Uh, and as as that is the case for most people, honestly. Uh, but that's going to be the end of the war. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm I'm still quite pissed about this. The fact that we didn't deserve to lose and we still lost. Uh, but you know it's whatever. GG to those guys. I'm not saying that they didn't deserve the win. Well, like not. I'm not directly saying that they played well. Uh, we just played better, and uh, they got the win that we probably deserved. But 
that's going to be it for today. I really don't want to come off as salty, and I'm not trying to insult any of these guys. They're all great guys over at DSVG. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just extremely mad at Kabam for this, and they may it may sound like I'm trashing them, but I'm I'm really really trying to not. I'm sorry if it came off that way. But that's going to be it. I'll see you guys later. I know I just ranted on at the end of the video for like eight minutes, but I, I really had a lot to say about this. So <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Bye.